So we need to talk. All STDs are on the rise, including syphilis, which is that STD that we done forgotten about, but it has made a comeback. Y'all remember or y'all heard about the Tuskegee trial, right? Yeah, the trial where the government knowingly withheld syphilis treatment. They knew the treatment existed at this time. They withheld syphilis diagnosis and treatment in black men to see how far or how bad or what the body, what syphilis did to the body and to experiment and to see what the effects of late stage syphilis would be on the body. Yeah, not a shiny moment in medicine history at all, but I digress, it's that syphilis that is making or has made a comeback. So let's talk about it. Syphilis is a very common STD in the 1800s and early part of the 1900s. The invention of penicillin, the cure for syphilis, plus the adoption of condoms has drastically reduced the numbers of syphilis cases to the point that by the time I was in medical school in the early 2000s, we learned about syphilis, but it was not really an STD that we ever saw in real life. Well, that has changed. Since the first decade of the 2000s, syphilis has started to increase. And in fact, we've seen a 26% increase this year from last year. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's a cure, it's a bacterial infection, there's a cure, penicillin, even if I get it, I'm good, just give me the drug, I'm good. But the thing is, syphilis is a trickster of a disease. Once dubbed the great imitator, because of its ability to have symptoms that mimic other diseases, some more benign, and its ability to go really unrecognized makes it very dangerous. And the longer syphilis goes in the body, the more dangerous it can become, the more potentially deadly it can become. So let me explain. Syphilis has three stages. In the first stage, it presents as a painless sore, genital sore. Now, because the sore is not painful, it can actually be missed. Particularly in individuals with vulvas, the painless sore can reside inside the vagina, near the cervix. And how the heck are you supposed to know anything exists there? It's not painful. And like most STDs, it can go unassumed or unrecognized. The thing about this first stage is that without treatment, that sore will eventually go away on its own. So that sore will go away and you may not even have noticed that it was there or taken much reason to be concerned because, okay, I had a sore, but now it's gone, so it must be okay. The sore goes away on its own. But syphilis is not done with your body. It's just hiding and waiting to come back with the second stage. In the second stage, symptoms can be all over the place. You can have a sore throat, fever, weight loss. Classically, it has a rash on your hands and your trunk. But we don't think of these symptoms as STD-related symptoms. So even with these symptoms presenting, syphilis isn't on the list of differential diagnosis. And so you may get treated as if you have something else for your fever, or your sore throat, or your rash, when indeed it's syphilis. And again, left untreated, this second stage turns into a latent stage. In the latent stage, syphilis is just chilling. It's in your body, but it's not giving you any active symptoms. And it's hiding in your body, waiting to manifest into the third stage. The thing about the latent stage is this can be latent for years. So you could be good, feeling like, okay, I'm good for years. Third stage of syphilis is bad. By the time syphilis gets to third stage, it is difficult to treat. Simple penicillin oral regimen will not work. This stage of syphilis can affect your skin, your liver, your heart, your brain, and it can lead to death. 
this is what indeed killed Al Capone. Or actually, you know what? I apologize. Al Capone did not die of syphilis, but he did have tertiary syphilis, but he died of something else. But I digress. Mothers can pass syphilis on to their babies, leading to congenital syphilis. Congenital syphilis can cause deafness, nose deformities, and even death in babies. And sadly, we have seen an increase in congenital syphilis over the last decade. Beyond syphilis, other STDs are on the rise as well. HIV has had a 16% increase from last year. Chlamydia, which had been decreasing, has increased from last year, and gonorrhea has been increasing as well. So somewhere along the way, like condoms fell out of favor and it was cool to have sex without a condom. I don't know where this happened, but we need to make condoms cool again. We need to make safe sex the message again. We need to normalize getting tested regularly. If you are a sexually active adult, you should be tested. If you don't know your status, you've never gotten tested before, now's a better time than ever. Let's normalize getting tested on a regular basis, especially if you have multiple sexual partners. I, for instance, when I was unmarried single would get tested once a year. And we have to change the course of this because we are dealing with a growing STD epidemic. Let's do better y'all. So tell me what you think about this video. Did you learn something? What comments do you have to add? What advice do you have? Let me know, like this video, comment, and join me next week with your favorite urologist right here. Go ahead and subscribe. Where you gonna be? You got nowhere else to be. Next week, next hump day, you gonna be right here with me, okay? Take care.